Live from a corner of Austin, Texas, where in this universe, Matthew McConaughey was never arrested for Nico, naked bongo playing, <laughs> and Walter Frawley never enjoyed a baseball game. It's going to be a great night. Now, here are two hosts who have settled the debate between Whedon and Snyder's Justice League cuts, Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young! All right, Justin, I got beef. Beef it up, I baby. Beef. How beef long? It up. How long did you think you could hide it? Hide what? Yeah, how long you, could you pull the digital snow across our eyes like some kind of neuromancer? How long did you think you could live right here in my state yeah. without revealing yeah. that she's a beat poet? I'm a beat poet? <laughs> uh, you going to deny it? Am I going to deny being a beat poet? Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? You can't even stop it. It just comes out naturally. I, I mean, who am I? Some kind of Kerouac? Well, no, we all know. I, I found you out. I found you out. You found me out. You I, I didn't are want to, I didn't want to reveal it. You're the chiptune beat poet. Chip tune beat poet. Everybody knows it now. It's a fact. It's in your Wikipedia already. And I'm sure Bryce is going to call it up. Anytime this dude hears chip tunes, he drops beat poetry. It's unreal. I'm not going to lie. As a joke during the green room, when Bryce was doing his big what is canonical history thing, <laughs> I went into the bathroom and smoked weed with the hope that I would blow a comical, gigantic cloud. Uh, and now I'm just high <laughs> and very confused. <laughs> hey, man, society, what's with that? I don't like it. I don't like your tone. And everybody needs to get a home. No homes? Well, that's bad. And you will be very sad. I'm a beat poet, and chip tunes are my game. I like to say the things that society <laughs> says is lame. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, secrets out. You can live with your shelf. Your, your shelf. Your shelf. shelf. We can shelf. Go, go to Ikea. <laughs> See everybody. <laughs> Oh no, great oh, night no. is through. Is it something that. Okay. It's important that you begin every show with a trust fall. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I love it. It's good. That's a good thing. Uh, how was your week? Uh, it was good. Wait, uh, uh, Brett, I have a question for you. Yes. Who didn't ever play a baseball game? No, enjoyed a baseball game. Who never enjoyed a baseball game? Walter Frawley. Do you know who Walter Frawley is? <laughs> Every okay, are you playing me? Everyone knows he's your chief competition in the Chiptune <laughs> B Poetry Slam. I legit have no I, idea I, who I, Walter I no Frawley idea. is. Uh, I love Lucy. He was the uh, the neighbor. Jesus, what's I love Lucy? I, that, I went that I I know. I, that's why when I was writing it out, I'm like, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> All right, right now in the chat, yes or no? Did you know who Walter? Wait, people are saying it's William Frawley. Frawley. See, I knew it. Wow. <laughs> All right. See, the problem was that he got the joke wrong. So Not I, that are we, we were are wrong. We, are, are, so are, that's are, what it was. Are we in a non-canonical universe? <laughs> no, no, no. He never <laughs> caught a baseball exactly game? exactly what I was... You know, that's right. We're in the universe where it was Walter Frawley, not William or... <laughs> You got it. Let's just keep going. This is a just very on William. rail show. This is a good show. Yeah. I'm just saying, and I'm we know just that because. Yeah. <laughs> go, Bryce no, go. gave me an edible just before we came. <laughs> God <so>. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bryce, what's our first story? Brian finds out I also laced his beers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's because everybody is saying they're high. All right. Let's have it. Birthday boy. Hey. hey. Uh, Remember when they all used to have to sing for He's a Jolly Good Fellow on television shows because Happy Birthday was copyrighted? Uh, no, but I, uh, but what uh, does no. stick with me is like at all of your Applebee's joints or whatever, they'd have to make up their own song yeah. because they couldn't do Happy Birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, 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 birthday
piece of shit now. Give me a back Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, um, Although that, if you've ever worked at a restaurant, that's all you ever really knew of it. Like when they'd be like, "All right, everybody, we all gotta go out to table six. I gotta get salads for table six. So, uh, in fact, there was man. I want to say 15 years ago. A, a, I'm, I'm sure I don't have their names right. YouTube legend, early legends. Uh, a bur- I want to say Barats and Barista, but that's not it. But uh, they, uh, he, he, he took the song that is public domain, Good Morning to You. Yeah. Also the exact same tune. Yeah. And wrote words about a, uh, a, a deity who uh, sees two young sheep to you. Yeah. And, and says, this is a totally original composition uh, that I have written that you can sing gotcha. <laughs> and it just happens to when performed sound exactly identical, identical like, to yeah. happy birthday to you uh yeah dude it uh, was your birthday it sure was happy happy birthday oh, no. <laughs> yeah. everybody come on out come on <laughs> out here we go here we go uh, <laughs> uh, all right so it's your birthday on monday yeah so you are now living one day into your new year into my how's new it, life how's my new life so far uh no so it's a whole different yeah you don't know what it looks like man on the other side <laughs> Is uh, that why I got the day off yesterday? Because it was your birthday. Yep. Not going to touch that <laughs> one at all. Thanks, uh, man. Although, although, although uh, uh, you know who is classy is Lamar Wilson. First words he says on Court Killers are, y'all making me work on Martin Luther King Day? <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, but the... Uh, uh, <laughs> The kid, the the kids all jumped out, gave me a big surprise. They all did a, uh, a birthday dance party in the morning. It was delightful. Had a wonderful day. Uh, this is not funny, so I'll keep it short. But it's very poignant because uh, I just turned forty-seven, which is the age that Teller was when I wrote him that letter when I was nineteen years old. Yeah. Uh, and and it began a correspondence that you know you guys have heard has meant a lot to to me. Uh, and, and now I, 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 it's so strange to wonder what I look like to some 19 year old out there, uh, and, and, and what, how many more gifts and how many more adventures I, I have over the next, you know, however many years it's, it's, it's very, I mean, I'm, I think I'm getting no, no, all no, emotional. No, no, no. The but, first but, time but, that yeah. when, when you, when we were talking about that on Monday is that like, when you think of where Teller has been from the 47 year old that you talk to to now, it's like, he's had a whole nother gigantic, like like arc of his career. Like, well, and, and, so and in fact, in like think about all the interesting things, you know, about Penn and Teller and then categorize them about whether or not they happened before 1995 or after 1995. And almost certainly it's after. And it, yeah. it's like, that's, that's what, gets me like really excited and pumped about like, like, Oh my God, all we got to, you know, let's keep on drifting. Let's go. Uh, so you got yourself a little, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I've, 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 I've had, I've had a 48 hour journey. So in order, what yeah. happened was Nick I, Nolte and Eddie Murphy came over. That's correct. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, on Sunday do brunch and I had kind of been baking in the back of my mind, like the idea of, Oh, this is going to be a big birthday for made up reasons or whatever yeah. <clears throat> like sunday afternoon i glanced down noticed that it's the 16th and that tomorrow's my birthday like i just genuinely didn't know uh i i have i have a, a bit of a, a a freak out and then i'm like okay wait, 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 wait. somehow i go through the roller coaster of logic that says i should spend money on a new hobby <laughs> and i call up body and i'm like bonnie I have this idea tomorrow I turn 47 and I should spend money and invest in a new hobby. And I just found something very expensive that could be delivered overnight and arrive on my birthday. All right, hold on. Before we get into what your actual hobby is, were there any runners up like judo, calligraphy, anything? <laughs> I wanted it to be. No, there really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Number one with a bullet. That was it. Uh, and so, uh, body says, uh, is it expensive? And I'm like, very. And, and then she, and she asks and, and, uh, and I tell her, I want to do the crazy drone racing with the VR goggles and all that stuff. 
And she goes, uh, 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 you were supportive, Bonnie? Yes. She, yes. she said, go for it. Uh, so so I, bought, I bought a thing and then got delivered overnight. So it is a drone that captures 4K and you can control with a, like, what, what, what looks, you know, fr from the outside to be like a VR. A VR headset. kind of rig. Yeah. But, but more importantly, like, uh, we even did a Modern Rogue episode about FP FPV drones, but they're so twitchy, so fast, and, and, and they run for such short amount of time that it's uh, the learning curve is very, very difficult. So uh, whereas this one from DJI, it, it, it basically, it, it, it holds your hand. It's got guide rails. It's got a simulator that you get to play and all that stuff. Uh, so it gets delivered last night uh, after we do the cord killers. Uh, I, I download all the firmware updates of the drivers and, and uh, it's now like 11 o'clock at night after a very long podcast day. And I basically get to the point where uh, in the dark, this thing, you know, got the goggles on, and this yeah. thing goes Wee! about a foot up, and I go. Wee! I'm like, good enough, good. <laughs> it so, still counts. Yeah. Still counts. Uh, and and so then I I take it in, and I leave it charging. Uh, this morning we come in. I take Joy on a walk, and uh, I, uh, there's a brief moment that I think I had left the door open all night. But it just turns out that it was unlocked, and uh, if you bump it hard enough, it'll just open, and that's what Joy had done. Gotcha. Uh, that was terrifying, but we got past it. Uh, then I started to like really process just how hard these things are to do, yeah, uh, and how sixteen mile an hour y the wind was today, and so to, today was that that was it that was it uh and then uh, uh then i discovered they have a simulator like a, a little uh, unreal engine plug-in for your phone you play and you practice and all that stuff and by the time we got here uh uh, uh brett shows up and uh, uh I, I felt i felt cool brett mm -hmm. i know for a fact i did not look cool but I felt cool. What was the question you asked me? Uh, how dorky do I look? No, you said, do I look dorky? Do I look cool? And I said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's okay. exactly yes. what I said. Okay. And, 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 and that is a true fact. Uh, but, but it's awesome, man. It really does feel like you're in a fighter jet uh, 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 swinging all around tr trees and all of that stuff. Uh, all I know is that when I arrived for the show, <laughs> I saw Brian with his headset, so I knew he was flying the drone somewhere, and I, I, I had known that you had gotten it, but when I got out of my car, the drone uh, uh, dive-bombed into my field of vision, and I was scared, not for my own safety, but because I didn't want to open my door and have the drone be clipped on my door, immediately ruining your birthday present. But it was just you terrorizing. On, on yeah. top of all of that, I even did like the Red Baron thing of like, I hid off to the side and I came in swooping from where the sun was oh, for Jesus. maximum <laughs> intimidation. And then uh, both of us at the same time said, you have 30 seconds to comply. <laughs> uh, no, it was great. Uh, I, I give it, I give it, I give it three days before I break it, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited. It's a lot of fun. It's a cool hobby. Uh, well, do you have any birthday goals or wishes? Um, man, I, I am ready, ready, ready to get more people out here on property to, for you and I to do more events, uh, uh to just make this more of a real place. It's been, it's been a, an imaginary place long, for far long too long gestation period for, boy. for, for all this. Are you guys? Are, I mean, this is we're we're really getting into the uh, uh, Brian says things officially. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you guys have plans for for the Founders Day thing? Uh, I I would say at this point, if I was going to place a bet, uh, Founders Day will almost certainly happen at the beginning of of April. We'll take whatever precautions are appropriate at that time around Based on April whatever, 9th, whatever things wherever are we are. But yeah. it's like. Man, I'm over this bullshit, and I'm ready to go on with the rest of my life, and I think a lot of other folks are there uh, as well. So if you're in the Founders Club, drop me an email. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, drop me an email. There if you go. don't know what my email is, uh, <laughs> fuck you. Watch wow. out for drones. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I would maybe just say it's a very easy to search in piece of information, but okay. Yeah, all we right. We need to That's say it, right? Did, haven't you said it at the end of like every episode of uh, 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 Scam School ever? Uh, yeah, you, you're going to make me say it.
I can say it. No, no, it's just Brian at Schwinn.com. Sorry, I was trying to figure out an interesting way to hide <laughs> any of this, and there isn't. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, there we go. Brian's next up. Glow stunts on jury. Glow stunts? Is that no, we talked blade about thing? We talked about Wordle last week. Yep. And I was like, I, I don't play it. And then I was like, you want to know what? This would be a thing. Because when you become an adult, uh, uh, you tend to lose contact with people. Like a contact becomes something that you need to make effort to maintain. And there's a reason why things like sports and stuff like that exist as a common thread to just keep family members talking, stuff like that. But I don't talk to my mom on like a daily basis. And so I figured, you want to know what? Wordle would be fun because I know she likes puzzle games. I was like, let me introduce Wordle to my mom. And now every day there'll be a reason for us to go back and forth and talk to each other. I'll play the game. She'll play the game. This started out as very, very sweet mother-son bonding. Till I found out that my mom is much better at Wordle than I am. Now, define better, because, because I am of the opinion that, that, that getting it early, like if you want to be the best at Wordle, you follow the advice of uh, Brett Rounceville and just look at the JavaScript, and, and, or, or was it Andrew Main? Both of them. Both of them figure it out and just, and just type that in. Like, that's the way to be the best at it. Okay. Well, sure. Look, uh, uh, yes, there is an element of guessing to all this. It's not purely skill. And <laughs> it's frustrating when somebody keeps getting it faster than you. So this was Sunday. Got it in two today. And by the way, because Wordle is, they give you little emojis so you can, you can see. That's she got proof. She got, it she, she got, she got, and she does not, she's not going to take the time to do the emojis herself. Yeah, there like, you go. Yeah, it, sorry. Strong evidence. I feel, I feel very, very confident that she indeed got it in two. And then I got it in four. I'm like, oh, you look at that. Yeah. Look at that. The matriarch of the family gets, gets one over on her son. Isn't that sweet? The next uh, day, those are the words you're saying. What are you feeling deep in your belly though? Then I get the next day. Got it. But a lucky guess. I didn't even know that this was a real word. Three. In three. Why wow. would, on your third guess, <laughs> you type out a string of characters that you don't believe are a real word? I, I, I don't know if she's fucking with me. Because then today, it was, shit, this was a hard one. In three. <laughs> <laughs> this was a difficult one today, too. I won't say what it was. It was. I but had there a, were I had a, many I got it in six. difficult right, well, letters. Well, 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 here, uh, we're not going to say it. We're, we're not, not going to say it, it, Jeff. It's cool. <laughs> but, but Anyway. All I want to say is this, uh, Gloria, stop fucking with me. All right. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a bonding thing. All it's done is just, it's just, look, we get it. You're really good at this and, and I'm bad and, and you regret having me. All right. We <laughs> all understand so, what well, your point I is. I really, I really think you might be reading I, look, yeah. something into, uh, are you just going to play Wordle now? I, I think, is it, uh, PR, uh, okay. no, don't you, do okay. it. We, okay, no, okay. All, all right. No, all right. cause it would just be you yelling the answer well, for people who don't want to hear it. But it would take it. more Including tries. Both of our, both of our camera people. All yes. right. All right. Both of our camera people have their, their hands, their, their ear muffing because they don't want to hear what the, what the Wordle word is. We should just close it with Rosebud's a sled. Jesus came back. Uh, <laughs> That's not five words. It's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, five letters. Oops, I fucked up. Bryce, next topic. Our next topic is... Video games with great night. <laughs> A big seismic activity in the world of video games. We go to our video game correspondent, Bryce. That's right. Today, Activision and Microsoft announced that Microsoft would be buying the... Activision Blizzard King Company for uh, less than just less than sixty nine nice million nice. billion excuse me sixty nine billion dollars. That is seventeen Star Wars how, how, for Activision Blizzard King. How much did they pay just for Minecraft? Uh, that's a good question. I think, I think that was like two billion. That was that was that was not not as much. They, Whatever they, they, it is, it clearly broke the heart of Notch. Who just haul his his ghost wanders around his Hollywood mansion? Uh, supposedly two heart? two point five billion dollars for Mojang in twenty thirteen. Yeah, that was a good pickup. 
Yeah. Uh, yes. Smart. Uh, uh, so given that this is real news because it affects me insofar as I play Hearthstone, uh, <laughs> what uh, uh, Microsoft, I think, has a pretty good reputation of being a good steward for that kind well, of that, thing. Yeah, right? that's what I wanted to ask Bryce about because hmm. it seemed like people were pretty jacked about it because Microsoft, like Bethesda, wound up doing really, really good stuff after Microsoft bought them. And, and obviously, like they've shepherded like the Halo games back in the day. So is this good? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at least in ter in a pure like games output stance, yeah, this is probably going to be a good thing if you are a fan of of these games. Microsoft has shown with with the Bethesda stuff that they will give a lot of autonomy to these studios. They will finish out whatever contracts are there to build out either Game Pass or their PC offerings. Um, I think stuff that already exists today or that we already know about, things like World of Warcraft, Overwatch 2, Diablo 4, those probably won't substantively change since this won't be done for 18 months. Yeah. But um, you could see a lot more stuff on Game Pass first day. Things like uh, the next Overwatch could be just free on Game Pass. So uh, uh, wasn't Activision like really fucking up? Like, wasn't it like five minutes ago that their entire leadership was like resigning because they were like harboring? Right. They're, they're, they're like, uh, you know who we should buy? Hmm. We have all the money in the world. We're really good at games. We can pretty much attract all the talent we want. Who's that radioactive company that everybody staged a walkout and also seems to be in the pocket of China and also has a bunch of misogynist uh, clips out there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was like eleven Joss Whedons were running the company <laughs> at all at all times. So like they they formed a money league. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I mean the IP is the IP, right? And so it's like, hey boys, we can just knock off all this misogyny <laughs> and maybe we can make video games. Uh, supposedly, uh, this the uh, the statement is that this is not because of all of the harassment and in in equal pay stuff that. Activision is going through, uh, but there are rumors that this uh, this was a lot of pressure on Activision, and that uh, when Microsoft gave them the offer, they tried to shop it around, and nobody else was interested. <laughs> uh, that well, is also, so good to hear because I was telling uh, prospective renters the other day oh my God. that I definitely didn't buy this house because of the triple murders <laughs> that had <laughs> happened in it <laughs> shortly a few weeks ago. I, I wonder, I mean, who even would be in that game? Like, who would be, who else has $69 billion that they can just cut the, cut the check for? Valve. Yes. Really? Steam, maybe, but they don't make games anymore. Like, uh, correct. They're, they're, they're the world's largest game platform, full stop. And they, and they don't make just, any games for it. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it. And they don't, I mean, they don't need to. They, they, they're the platform, right? Yeah. And so they could just buy uh, all that content if they wanted. Well, they already get it for free, though. Because they don't pay to put anything on Steam. Really. Yeah, they I mean, because yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know Valve's like market cap or anything. But I would, I would guess that we're talking in the like Amazon, Apple territory uh, uh, that can just I, drop sixty nine billion dollars. Is, 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 is Valve privately held? I think, I think all that is is we can only guess at, right? I yeah, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Uh, but well, we Valve, Valve is it Amazon size or but, Microsoft size? Are they? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I mean, know. we can't say because uh, uh, Leonimos is, is verifying their their private company. Uh, but uh, but there are a lot of players like uh, Epic's got a lot of money. Amazon is looking to make video games and, and yeah. game streaming. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is this is not this is just me saying. I think yeah. that like to to bring Activision is a pretty big fish in that pond, it's here. right? Oh, like, yeah. Like in the we only make or sell video games pond, it would be hard to go lateral for a deal like that. You would you would have to have somebody that is kind of in 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 the bigger, larger celestial space to like reach down with its gilded hand and pluck you up into the ascension. Real quick, I want you to put a fist behind your back. Okay. And I want you to make a number that matches the number of people in this room who were born before Pitfall. All right, so I'm thinking, look, look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I believe. Born before Pitfall? It was released, yeah. It's, so I only have five? Like, I can only go up to five? Oh, I, I mean, you can put a second hand back there if you I like. guess we're all old. We're very old. <laughs> yeah, put as many figures. Like, what's your guess? Born before Pitfall was released. I we have seven people in here. Uh, 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 three. 
Yeah, no, I think I think almost all of us, except for. Uh, 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 Wait, when was it released? I think it was 1980. Uh, April 20th. Hey, hey, 1982. Oh, oh born, yeah. born before. Okay, so I was born born or after. Yeah, yeah. So how many? What's the answer to my own question? <laughs> like I am after. How many were born before Pitfall? Before Pitfall. Two, yeah, three, yeah, 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 four. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that tracks. Nice. Cool. Bryce, what's the next topic? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you end a video game segment. <laughs> Whoa, Moon Knight! Shit, we probably should have shown you the yeah, trailer. Yeah, doggone it! Oh, I didn't shit. see it. Should, should, uh, should we do it? All right, hold on. Wait, let me let me, let me let me let me reenact it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> hold uh, on. Let uh, me just go to YouTube. I'll sit through a, a what a, an ad before an ad. I'm trying to watch the ad on Kickstarter. We're selling a knife. A knife with a skip ad. Skip, skip ad. On Kickstarter, we're selling on, another skip, knife. Skip. skip ad, skip ad. Okay, here we go. Community college is here for you. Uh, Learn how to make a knife. Like, am I even on the right account? Okay, Moon Knight, let's go. Let's uh, go, baby. I am Oscar Isaac, and I have a weird British accent now. Uh, uh, I'm twitching around. I'm slapping my face. Oh, no. I got a cell phone or something. Uh, I'm seeing, is that Moon Knight? Or pr I probably call it something different because it's the first episode. <laughs> 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 sorry. So, so hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay. Then Ethan Hawke shows up and he's like, "I've seen you. You're a Moon Knight." <laughs> oh, and like then all of a sudden, Oscar Isaac's like, "Oh no, my British accent is going crazy." <laughs> wait, and wait, then, wait, and just... then all of a sudden, he's like, "Like." <laughs> And he turns into Moon Knight, and then he goes, Wait. Wah, Moon Knight, Disney Plus. Hold on. This one may have been shot during COVID and be weird in the first few episodes, <laughs> like Hawkeye, but probably isn't gonna be total dog shit like uh, Captain and the Winter or, and the Winter Soldier, and, and the other one, and the other uh, one, uh, Falcon. Uh, Captain and Captain Falcon, oh. okay, Captain <laughs> and Tennille. but it uh, probably won't be good as WandaVision because that shit ruled. We, also, with, with Boba Fett, why is he such a puss? <laughs> like, why, why does he make friends with the Greasers. <laughs> oh, it's me, Boba Fett. I rule with respect. Yeah, they but, did that in the trailer. I, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why so, did you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah, no, they didn't. You're right. They didn't. No, when you say, Bwah, now I'm the Moon Knight, does, does he like Hulk out and become the Moon Knight? Because I thought he was like a Batman kind of guy. So, yeah, he can't it's sleep. It's like flashed, right? He like flashed into, like, no, well, they, it's like it, like it like wraps around him. It's like, like, he's like, like, oh, there's a prophecy or some shit. I don't know. I only <laughs> no, really. No, like Stephen Root comes out and he's like, they took my water. Man, they took my water. These greasers, they're always with their switch blades and they're do what? Like, ah, they better get my water back. And then Boba Fett's like, I'll oh, get your water back. Hey, By going to the mayor. <laughs> I'm going to go to the greasers. Hey, you greasers, you better give the man his water back. And they're like, oh, water's too expensive, you old piece of shit. Hey, Fuck you. How about two lollipops, kid? I love you now. <laughs> We're not interesting as characters. Move into my palace. Steven Root's like, man, now you took my water. And he's like, lower the prices, bitch. <laughs> Good thing I have an army protecting me while I sleep in this tank of water. Nobody can sneak into my literal fortress. Murder and Chewbacca! Oh! Oh! Murder oh, no. Chewbacca's beat the shit out of me! Oh, oh my god! Oh, fuck. How do I have 50 people in this, in, in this literal fortress and murder Chewbacca, <laughs> the least fucking inconspicuous character in Star Wars history, who has metal draped around him! He can't walk through! He's like a fucking 80-year-old woman at a Jewish deli! She has so much jewelry, it just rattles when she sneezes! This is how festooned! <laughs> In fucking metal, murder Chewbacca is. It takes. Excuse me, excuse me. It's me, Danny Trejo. What's the <laughs> scariest creature you can think of in all of just Star Wars history? Oh, probably the Rancor. Ah, have you ever seen a cute one that plays peekaboo? Okay, his eyes are covered. His eyes are covered. Okay, now stand there, stand there, get ready, Ed. Peekaboo, peekaboo. Anyway, Uta Guta Solo is us huts. We're 
leaving because CG very expensive. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> and then murder Chewbacca just runs off camera. Like he like, just runs like, like, like the to Sasquatch his, like, at the end of uh, the Tenacious he D episode. He just runs to his Kia. That he's like, oh shit, I'm double parked. <laughs> And he lets them. Boba Fett's like, yeah, you can go. You're good. We don't need you to date. Yeah, say, man. Sorry. I'm sure. I don't know. Uh, you're probably going to come back at the end because they all fucking always come back at the end in these. Uh, uh, and then they're like, fuck. That murder Chewbacca <laughs> shit was was really intense and it really fucked with me. I need to go lodge a formal complaint with the mayor. <laughs> and so they go to the mayor's office. Yep, yep, yep. And they're like, like, hey, we're hey, we need an appointment. And you're like, <laughs> they, oh, oh, you wanted a mayor? I'm afraid we're fresh out. All these greaser kids had oh, you seem intimidating. I think there might be some more mayoral candidates in the back. Hold on, let me just do, 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 not even a joker hyperbole. The fucking Boba Fett and says to his first mate, uh, uh, hey, we really want this appointment. <laughs> because that's what a bounty hunter says. I want to wait for this appointment. It's a good appointment. And they're, oh, shit. The guy ran away. Let's break the lock. Boop, we break the lock. Meanwhile, comically, like it's a Simpsons episode where they do the, like, the, 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 the you know, Mayor Quimby, er, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, no, not the last please. chatters, tumble noises outside. He accidentally hits the horn, like a garage, like a garage, <laughs> and then he fucking floors it. But apparently, the speeders only go five miles an hour. Oh. So the greasers assemble and they fucking chase after him, and they're perfectly candy coated mopeds, <laughs> mopeds, color coordinated mopeds. By yeah, the way, they, they, color they, coordinated. They, then he runs into. Oh, oh, they even do the trope with the two people carrying a pane of yes! glass. <laughs> Only it's a giant fucking painting of a, of a hut. <laughs> they did it and, twice. They did it and, twice. <laughs> and he crashes. And he's like, well, let me try it. And, it. and I swear to God, they use the sound effect from a 57 Chevy. Go like, rah, 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 And just to drive the point home, he goes, wee, 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 like the Millennium Falcon. Anyway, then, the, fucking it's gang, gonna be great. then the gangs in New York shows up and Boba Fett <laughs> uses the wrong pronoun for the man with the fucked up eye and, <laughs> and, and that's Moon Knight. He does that's he Moon Knight. It's a show on Marvel Plus. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be great. You got it. Be great you show. don't need to watch the trailer, <laughs> listeners. You just got great, it. It's a great trailer. Bryce, what's our next topic? Our last, last to topic, and I do believe it's me. That's right. right. We've got one last topic. Oh. Uh, Brett. Brett. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm told that uh, one Brett Weaver has got to. Uh, do, yes. do you want to oh, go up and way, show? By the way, by the way, sun, Sunday is the opposite of Moon Night. That's <laughs> yes. that, we saved that one for the show. Um, you know what? What I love is that save you that put it in the right show. moment, in the right way. Save Perfect. That one for yep. the show. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, so Brett. this is more of a, a a visual thing. Oh, okay. Here we go. But I, damn. I had a thing made. If you'll notice. Okay. What? Oh, is you've got nice? you, yeah. You've oh, got, it's you've a shirt got, with your name on it. Should I, should I go yeah. It looks like it looks like a bowling league shirt. Yeah. Here, let me uh, let me. Uh, all right, Brett's gonna. Brett's gonna. Uh, awesome, ladies and gentlemen, awesome. Brett Weaver is making his way up to the stage. A lay minister's uniform. Hello, Brett. It's a really no cool. No way! All right, turn around. Oh, oh goddamn! Oh, shit. He made a great night bowling shirt. It's yep. so cool. Yep. It's the black and the blue. He's got the logo on it. Like perfect. That's that's, thing. that's great. That's that's you that you got. I, you I got, get you, you a link to where you can order <laughs> more of them. God God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> well, now we all we all gotta get it, and we gotta walk around and snap to intimidate all them huts <laughs> if they want to buy water. Hey, I have a totally Dude, that's non-committal awesome. attitude like toward it. anarchy. It's great. Uh, it's a shirt that you could wear in public, unlike the pr previous title of this show. That's right. <laughs> Actual feedback that we got. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I love your show, but, uh, but uh, okay, yeah, sorry, can it not say? Title. And by yeah. the way, someone suggested, yes, we should all get the shirts and they should all have my name on it. Yeah, I'm going to get one. It's all Brad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the canonical shirt. There you go. All right. Thank that's you, a, Brett Weaver. Brett's an amazing man. He has beautiful eyes and soft but firm hands. <laughs> 
You know what else I'm is soft and firm? Man, too. that was a yeah. crazy trailer. You know. <laughs> Moon Knight. Yeah, fucking Moon Knight, dude. That that shit's gonna be great. Oscar Isaac's a great actor. Hey, remember when hey. they totally wasted him in an X Men movie? They decided to just oh, put him God. in a purple sarcophagus and be yeah. like, act through that, bitch. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. I had this thought the other day. Well, what was your thought, Brian? Well, I was going through my pockets and I said, dang it, if it hasn't happened again and the whole world went black and white. Okay. And I, and I heard a voice ask, has this ever happened to you? Damn. And I tried to... I try to pull out just one slim credit card or maybe a fiver or maybe like a, just a, a dollar coin tip for someone. But yeah. Instead, I just pulled out this 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 can of lettuce of, of, of money, just, of, of just cash. cash. Yeah. Yeah. And I was it was a like, literal cash grab. <laughs> well, <laughs> cash that's the grab. problem, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden I heard a voice that says, there's got to be an easier way. Yeah, <laughs> of, of what to do with your money. And, and the way that you do uh, uh, deposit your money is to in our bank account. That's right. We are a to, bank now. We're a bank. But uh, and by the way, uh, uh, you might think that this is a joke or that we have to give a disclaimer because otherwise we would get in trouble with the FDIC exactly. and certain federal enforcement agencies. We are a literal bank now. Yeah, and if anybody has a problem with it, they can F my DIC. <laughs> <laughs> so head on over. Did you write that one too? <laughs> to, uh, to our <laughs> bank. <laughs> I should smoke weed more often. <laughs> <laughs> head on over on to, fucking fire to our bank at patreon.com slash great night, where guess what? We are... And this is not a joke because if it was a joke, we could get away with it without doing jail time. Yeah. This is a legitimate promise yeah. that you will triple your money in 30 minutes guaranteed. Absolutely. I, I kind of blacked out on most of what you were saying, <laughs> but I'm, I'm really into it. Patreon.com slash great night. About a 3,000 per minute return on your investment yes. if you invest in our real bank at patreon.com slash great night you want to have a great night you know what's better than a great night a the, great life the, the good morning you'll have oh hell yeah when you wake up to discover that your simple 300 dollar per episode investment yep. has definitely guaranteed to return into five billion dollars in the morning <laughs> you're gonna feel so good when you wake up you're gonna smoke a cigarette <laughs> Even if you don't like smoking cigarettes, it's going to feel that good. And you're going to have so much money that you're going to think, I don't even know where to get cigarettes. Um, so you're just going to buy a cigarette company. You're just going to buy Philip Morris. That's right. And you're going to name it Philip Doug or whatever the fuck your name is. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Somebody's approaching from over here. Oh, shit. Hold on. Hey, what up? It's me, Philip Morris. Oh, shit. In this bit, that's definitely not a joke. We are actually offering... Uh, whatever the return on investment was. $500 billion? <laughs> For all it takes is $1 per episode, $2... $5 <laughs> per episode over at patreon.com slash great, great night. night. Philip Morris? Yes. What are you doing these days? Buying Kraft macaroni and cheese? That's who's paying for that. Da <laughs> <laughs> dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought we could hold it longer, actually. Oh, I don't know why sorry, everybody punched un... out on that. That was... I feel like we could have gotten a solid more five I seconds. I should have respected the stare into the lens. Respected. Can we restart? Just go back to the point, okay, and I'll right. come back. I, mm. no, go Has back. this no, ever turn, happened turn to you? No, turn it <laughs> back. No, no, no. We need Philip Morris back. back. We need you yeah, to put yeah, the Just go to the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're pointing at the camera. Uh, three, two, well, Jesus Christ, Philip Morris, that's what you'll say when you go to <laughs> patreon.com slash great night. Remember, we get a bonus episode out to you every single Thursday. If you go on over there right now, you know, a lot of people say that cigarettes are bad for you, but yeah. there's one time that's not true. When, when you are a patron over at patreon.com slash great night, it makes you immune to cancer. It does. And it causes you to become not nicotine cancer with every cigarette you smoke. So, if you smoked every day, how smart could you be? Well, I mean, the faster way to get smart would be to invest even more over at patreon.com slash great night. Great night. Oh, my God. Philip Morris. Philip Morris. What a mess. It's been six months, Philip Morris. God damn it. He's uh. been fucked since the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I bought Kraft. Yeah. 
There we go. Hey, everybody. Anyway, give us uh, money. It's a fun time. Everybody loves it. That was a bit. Yeah, what? none of that shit's real. What? Except, well, except for the giant return on investment. Oh, okay. And it, the fact that cigarettes aren't harmful. <laughs> so no, don't. Oh, you're just gonna oh go. that's oh, where that's we crossed the line. That's, far, again. Interesting. that's right. where we crossed the I, line. I, I think we're pretty clear. Let's we be very it. clear. None of that's he, he, real. That, that, that we, we clearly crossed the Rubicon into parody, right? As your attorney, I think you're. Oh, he's, okay. He said a very funny okay. long thing, and we, he wasn't on a microphone. Sorry. Everything that we just said is 100% true, or. Your money back. Or. No, shit. Wait, no. No, 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 no. no, no. Maybe the we, of that. It could also be that we keep all of your money and yeah. say, thanks, bro. Oh, no. It's all true, but. The return on investment is, is in peace of mind. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we're covered, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you also get uh, four extra your... episodes per month. You Sometimes five. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes five. five. And sometimes why? <laughs> <laughs> huh? You know, I had someone tell me that that was bullshit, that there were way more rules on when why is a vowel. Wait, wait more rules than sometimes? Yeah. Wait, like, like, like what? If it's what is this? If it's at the, this is a very wry take. If it's if it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking Oscar Wilde over here. <laughs> I mean, you're a real wild stallion. Wild stallion rules. I don't know. It was a bunch of weird rules. If it's like, if it's there's if it's next to an I or if it's next to an E, then it's not a vowel. And but then if it's, if it's the last letter in the word, it, oh, it, oh oh sometimes. Well, but it says sometimes in the fucking Bon Mo, right? Like, so, like, no one's like, it's always a vowel. It's sometimes why. A E I O U and sometimes. I feel like why. we should go back to the part where we said that smoking cigarettes <laughs> will become good for you if you. That's not true either. That's not true, man. Is that not real no, medical no. advice? No, you have to like find an amulet. I mean, really, really, that. really, the whole bit was support us on patreoncom We really really love that. money. Yeah. God. <sighs> Not as much so as we good. love this game. Hello, everybody. We had a brand new game for you today. Do you like yeah. new games? Uh, oh, fuck, man. I live for them. Uh, well, this was inspired by a, a, a tweet that I saw. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, good tweet. Uh, but I have gone and found a bunch of maps of the United States. Are you familiar with the United States of America? <laughs> yes, I am. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think it's, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a place. I give it five stars on Yelp. <laughs> On Country Yelp. Yeah, Country, <laughs> on country Yelp. Yelp. Uh, so I have gone and found uh, maps that use the United States as uh, as the map uh, and erased the title of those maps. So I'm going to give you a map, and it will not say what the map is of. You're both going to guess what the map is of, and whoever is closest to what it actually is of will get a point. Uh, before yeah. we get into the game, Brett, do we have any punishments? Yes. <laughs> Brett is furiously looking at his phone, <laughs> trying to find I'd like the punishment. To, uh, I'd like to uh, d uh, chide those who have not sent in punishment. Who have yes. not done Brett's job yeah. for him. Please yeah. do yeah. Brett's job. Great I mean, night, I got the now. shirt. I've been doing the announcing part. Also, yeah. also, we're not a bank. I think I said we're, we were a oh, bank. Yeah, we're also not a bank. Don't smoke yeah, good. and also, uh, 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 my wife would be upset if anybody effed my DIC. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. I. I did, Ask her first, at least. <laughs> she seems so like modern too. Yeah, so, she might be into it. I don't know. I, but I, ask I her. have a punishment idea, but I'm gonna within the next half of we'll this, check in. Somebody needs to send me something, okay, or else I'm gonna do something. Yeah. That's I feel bad. like the consequences might be dying on the yes. line. <laughs> no. I feel like the consequences they're, they're 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 in a rough spot right now. Yeah. All right, well, well we'll check in on that a little yeah. later today. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a map, and you're gonna guess what the map is of. Ready? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start with this one here. Brian, you're going to be the first person to guess on this. Okie doke. Uh, it will be on the screen behind you, and it, we've got it here on the video. We've got a map of the United States of America. Brian, could you describe uh, what what is uh, tallied on? Don't do that. Like, uh, don't do that. Don't wait, do that. Don't I feel do that. like he just yeah. showed a whole bunch of answers. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like I feel like uh, without even oh. looking at that first one, my guess is going to be that uh, I just saw a map of the most... Frequently language spoken languages that are not English, English yeah. in each state. That goddamn auto uh, uh, fucking 
Auto Replay. fucking. Uh, hey, auto, it could be uh, worse. You, you could have claimed a an impossible return on investment and stated repeatedly that it wasn't a joke when it was a joke. I would never do that. All right, did you did you do that? I. Uh, I would never. That, that's the first rule of podcasting, Justin. What's rule number one of podcasting? Uh, don't impersonate Philip Morris. <laughs> don't impersonate Philip Morris is number one. <laughs> and don't make false claims about how much return on investment you can provide no, to your shareholders. You got to be really specific on the return on investment. And, okay, let's just okay, make it so, zero. <laughs> so, so, so yes, this uh, a good example. This is a map of the most commonly spoken languages other than English or Spanish. We've got a lot of German, a lot of Vietnamese here. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to this next one here, and it is paused, and it is not playing. Uh, uh, gentlemen, Brian, you're going to start first. What is this a map? Of? We're looking at a pretty traditional Google Maps style uh, road map. It shows the interstate system of uh, the United States, uh, starting with A in Oregon, goes down to San Francisco, Idaho, uh, Colorado. Oh my I'm not, I'm not, fucking I, God. I, I didn't look. I didn't look. I oh didn't my. Even look, I swear. Okay. I didn't see whatever that was. Um, <laughs> this is this is going <laughs> great. Go? <laughs> <laughs> this is going great. I this is going great. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, it, it goes down uh, to Colorado, up through Kansas. Uh, uh, it avoids Iowa like the plague, uh, weirdly. It goes all the way back down. Wait a minute. Would this be a map of the longest interstate route one could take from coast to coast? All right. No. Brian's going to say, well. Yeah. Uh, Justin, I'll, what are I'll, you thinking? I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Okay. Brian's going to say the longest uh, highway uh, coast to coast. Right. Man, I, I would think based on, because there's a lot of clusters in the upper Midwest and a lot of clusters on the northeastern seaboard, looping especially through the top of Florida, that this is probably... Now, there are some states that it doesn't visit. Yeah, this is probably the shortest distance between towns named Springfield. Oh. God damn it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that would yes. be a really good guess. Uh, there we go. Justin got it. The <laughs> most efficient route between every Springfield and the United States. <laughs> good okay. job, man. I'm very good at this. Uh, we're not a bank. No return no on return investment. investment. Uh, Philip Morris. You, you do get your own RSS feed, I though. Have, yes. Yeah. You do. Okay. I'm going to skip a few of these. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't smoke cigarettes. Well. Uh, okay, uh, here's one for you. All right, gentlemen. Uh, I've got a map for you of the United States here. Uh, Justin, you're going to start first. Can you tell me what this is a map of? Pause, don't show it. Don't show it. Okay, you can't read it. It's so small, you can't read it. You're good. Okay. Uh, Justin. Uh, so uh, there are several states that are highlighted, but on a county by county level. So there are some counties that are outside of the states, including Florida, New Mexico, Nevada, and uh, what is that? Oregon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Alaska's highlighted, and so is, I believe, Vermont Hawaii? or Maine up there. Oh, yes, that's know. Vermont. Is that Vermont? Oh, whatever. Um, it looks like a V. Oh, shit. <laughs> and the one next to it looks like a hanging ham, so that you know that's New Hampshire. That's New Hampshire. <laughs> I, I never is that for, is that a real thing that you know? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Uh, all right, so uh, I would say that this is probably a th something that has to do with legality. Yeah, like because... uh, like like there's two counties in Washington, the whole state of Oregon, the whole state of Nevada, two counties in California, all of New Mexico, all of. Uh, so I would say it's like states, Florida counties in which it is legal to Boy. shoot up. Horse. Counties where it's legal to shoot a horse. You yeah. think you can't shoot a horse in almost all of Texas? I, I also want that to be worded vague enough that it also could be doing heroin. I know what it is. I, I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh Brian, what is what's your guess on this map? Uh could I could I could I pull uh Andrew Heaton? Uh yeah, what Andrew Heaton if you Andrew Heaton, do you have, he, do you have can, can you please can you please get on mic when you when you help him? Oh yeah, here uh, use Brett's mic here. Uh, places that still have profitable blockbusters. Hard to believe, but true. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you for your help. That's like, uh, there was, uh, back back when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire just started, they had like a home game, and there was always like, uh, uh, if you pulled the audience, you always got the right answer. Yeah. If you, whatever the other one was. But then 
if you phoned a friend, if it just called someone and the guy goes, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then, <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's something esoteric, like uh, where where cannibalism, where it's legal to freeze your head, where it's legal to freeze your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, yeah, crazy futurism, cryogenic stuff. Is that suggest one? Yeah, Brett, do you have a guess? Yes, my guess is that these are all the counties where it's uh, okay to be topless in public. Oh, male and female nipples. Yep. Unfortunately, I don't see... I know that New York is a place where uh, uh, there's... You flash there's, them there's, nips? Yeah, where there's 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 top-naked equality. Them, them, mm -hmm. them silver dollars? Just a, just a guess. Okay. okay, good guess. Good guess, Brett. Okay, uh, this is a map. It's a little hard. It's going to be a little hard to see on uh, your screen here, but uh, these are counties that do not celebrate Columbus Day. Oh, oh! These are counties and city states. Wow! That is is that, do not celebrate Columbus is, Day. Is that our county of Travis right there? I that, it is. think so. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, they legally or officially do not uh, recognize Columbus Day. Always piling on the Italians. Any of y'all motherfuckers work on Columbus Day? When was Columbus Day? Uh, October. Uh, <laughs> probably because I work here. Yeah, I, 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 I worked on it. The only people I ever knew in my life that were like really into Columbus Day were like super Italian people that were like, it's our day. And that's what it was about. Which is weird yeah. because it, it was, was yeah. the yep. Spanish government that, that funded it, right? No. I mean... Well, yes. Yeah. Like Chris, like, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, I think you're yes. Saying, ah. The Spanish government didn't fund. But Columbus like, like you're not you're not defined <laughs> by no, your work. No, way you're not defined by your boss. Like, okay, if you get right. a statue made out of you, but you worked at Blockbuster, you don't. It's not Blockbuster the statue. Fair enough. Who is getting a statue? What? Oh, never mind. No, this is too much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're, Morris. <laughs> William Morris is getting it. Uh, so your answers are: it's where it's legal to freeze your head, said Brian. Yeah. And Jerry said countries where it's legal to. Quote, shoot horse. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it. I got this one. And Brett guessed counties where it's okay to be topless. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna ask uh, science. Science it up. Come on. Beep, beep, beep. Who's a more famous Italian, Christopher Columbus or Mario, you think? Uh, <laughs> Mario Puzo? <laughs> Author of Ollie? Yeah. The guy. No, no. Yeah, the guy who breaks bricks with his fist and shoots fireballs. Princess is in another castle. Mario Botali. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 look, I know the world I'll, of sideshow entertainers, and I'll, I don't know I'll, nobody who does. Come to you for a favor. Ding, ding, Save my daughter's beep, wedding. Beep, 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 oh, now, yeah. oh, All right, we've got an answer. Hey, Justin got the point on that hey! line. There we go. You know, like friends with Yoshi. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Chris Pratt's gonna play him, you know, my friend. Yeah. Uh, all right, here's another map. Let's see which one this is. Ah, here we go. We've got a map. <laughs> now all I can think of is Chris Pratt playing the Godfather. <laughs> 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 I wish I could do hey, Chris. Man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah. One of these days, uh, I'm gonna ask you for a favor. <laughs> this is a dangerous <laughs> rabbit hole that I'm just gonna steer around. All right, Brian, we're gonna start with you here. Take a look at this map for me. Uh, Can you describe it a little bit for our listeners at home? If 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 you've seen uh, a what are those like uh, the ISS is passing over uh, a, 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 an area that's going into nighttime, and you see all the power grids on, uh, imagine that pretty much bisecting. Uh, the United States, but for some reason, there's also a lot of really bright stuff happening during what should be the daylight areas. So, however, uh, yeah, this this leads me to it's definitely related to cities or travel or activity uh, uh, where where humans are. Okay, um, I'm gonna say. I'm going to say this is a distribution of people who play the lottery. People who play the lottery. All right. Mm. Good guess. Justin, what do you think this is? For about? audio listeners, it looks like somebody left America out of the refrigerator and mold grew on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, all kind of on the, on the west half. I, yeah, I, I, think, I think this might just be straight out population. No. Yeah. No. One third percent uh, of, of America lives on the eastern seaboard. So, like, like the the fact that there's not as much 
population uh, past the, the the Mississippi is not that weird. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say straight out people peeps. He's just gonna say the population. People. Okay, Brett, do you have a guess? Uh, play? Do you like playing? I, I like the I like the population. Uh, okay, no cosine Justin's population yeah. guess. All right, uh, Brian, you said a uh, uh, map of people who play the lottery. Justin. Well, yeah, I, I uh, uh, some uh, suddenly I'm feeling pretty bad about the fact that uh, what I did was I in the Venn diagram, <laughs> Brian drew a circle of people who blank, and Justin says, "You know what I think?" What about <laughs> all people? And just draws a giant circle and just writes people. People. <laughs> well, science does take specificity into account. Brian, okay. So this is not the end of your game. Uh, this is a map. This is a map of light pollution in the oh. United States. Light pollution measured uh, in the, the United States. It's wild that there is such a sharp line right down the middle of the country. So, so I, uh, here, here is my proposal for uh, uh, if, you, if you remove Texas, because uh, 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 as we found out during the winter apocalypse last year, last year yes. uh, Texas, uh, uh, Oklahoma, and Kansas – is its own there are only three power grids in the united states uh and we're in ERCOT. so if you take out ERCOT, then basically you have the eastern seaboard which is all one grid and you have the western half of the united states which famously is constantly having uh, uh, uh challenges with uh, their power mm. uh that then all of a sudden it does track oh huh? yeah does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 next we did up it. in my lecture. Um. <laughs> <laughs> next slide. Uh, uh, Bryce, I am ashamed to say yeah. that I did not keep up on the scores up until now. I'll let you know at the end of this round. Okay. Once we give out the right point. Uh, and you know what? The science machine has come back quickly and told me that, uh, you know what? Lottery was not close enough. We gave it to Justin. Hey! For people. people. For good people. old people. Because where there's people, there's, right. there's lights, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't like being in the dark. No. That's a, it's a bad saying. You're no. leaving me in the dark here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people hit to me like People the say shit like that. <laughs> they like it when it's bright out at night. Like right. A, like the, like a, on a moon night. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's a moon? The opposite of Sunday. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, here's another map for you, gentlemen. We've got a map here of the United States. Justin, can you describe this map? And uh, we're going into this round. The score is zero to three. Justin has got three points. Brian yes. Has got so three. there is a map of the United States. Uh, uh, California is in red. It says Garcia. New Mexico is uh, orange. It says Martinez. There's a collection of upper Midwest and Plains states that say Johnson. The rest of the map says Smith, except for Georgia that says William, uh, and then Hawaii said Lee. I'm going to say that this was third most third party votes in the 2016 election. <laughs> I'm going to say most popular last names, but why not? Oh shit, that's way better. Yeah. <laughs> Now, why why do you think Thanks that, Brian? To get to him. I mean, I mean, because it's like I'm picturing somebody in <laughs> California walking around, uh -huh. smoking their legal weed, saying, "Hey, you got any taxes? Give me some more taxes." And I was like, "Oh, I bet his last name is Garcia." <laughs> <laughs> and then I picture somebody else. <laughs> Who's up in Minnesota and he can't decide like oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he can't decide. Yeah. No? What is he doing? Yeah. Like you go to Montana or maybe I can go south to uh, <laughs> Nebraska. <laughs> to the other one. That's why I, I just feel like a real Johnson here. And then what happened? in Georgia, Brian. Uh, they're all cool cats. <laughs> the Williams. Williams. The, yeah, last yeah. name Williams. Uh, the uh, Hawaii is Lee because they all famously supported the Confederacy and changed their last name. <laughs> That's true. Look support. it up. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I somebody brought this How are you going to buy the way that? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> wait, wait for it. I, I, I can land this plane. Somebody suggested this in my politics chat uh, chat room. That you do a unironic picture 
of the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. On the General Lee. Yeah. A cab. <laughs> All, all cops are bastards. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, shit. Fitz! <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that's, uh, you, uh, uh, you should do that once you leave. Uh, it's the most confusing poster ever. <laughs> exactly. Who's going to get, like, someone's going to be like, hey, I like your, hey, wait a minute. But then again, but then, oh, but, yep. Yep. Come on, Fitz. Oh, them Duke boys have done boys. it again. <laughs> All right, uh, we've got your answers here. Brian said uh, these are last names, <laughs> and Justin said these are uh, the states, uh, the the most popular third party candidate in the previous election. Let's take a look at it. The most common surname in the United States. Oh, That's well a Brian. Played. Well played. It was the visualizing that really landed it. It was. Yeah. It was. I like the man in. <laughs> Minnesota, <laughs> juggling four hams, uh, uh, pissed off, pissed off that, that the tax that the tax man Johnson was gonna take one of them. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brett. What is their score going into our next round? I totally know it now. It's uh, Brian's got one point. Yep. Justin has three points. Man, pop, pop, pop. I'm good at games. Uh, While we're here, let's do a <clears throat> a refresh on the. Thing. Nope, nobody nope. said anything. Okay, we'll check in a little <laughs> the, uh, the consequences of this game is the loser will have to sing a recap of the show using I feel like we've the, done that one the, before. Using the the song Last Christmas. Uh, oh Jesus. Uh, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Let's okay. go. Great. All right, there we go. Alrighty, let's take it to another map. Here's a map for you. Bum bum bum. Brian, yeah. can you describe this map for me? Yeah, dude. It's like, uh, oh, oh, hold on. Uh, it's a map of the United States, only it's broken into, like, um, somebody used a pixel cluster uh, Photoshop thingy. So it looks like a bunch of uh, gemstones coming together. You got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, I, I'm going to say this is a proposed, if you were to break America apart into 20 countries, what they would be. Oh, okay. Interesting. A redistribution of states. But you're also saying, because they, they're, they're going into the oceans and shit in there. Yeah, because uh, seasteading is going to be a real thing. Buckle up, buddy. <laughs> Buckle up. Buckle. You, ain't, you, you ain't even smoked seaweed yet. <laughs> <laughs> seaweed but is the opposite do, of Moon Knight. Helpful. <laughs> it's me. Oh, That's Philip Morris. Morris. Oh, Philip Morris. Philip Morris. You back. broke the cardinal rule. <laughs> no. Please do not talk about your return on investment for shareholders. Justin. I'm going to say that this is an airspace thing. An airspace thing. Yeah, this is like uh, something. You get to, to use the word thing? Airports and like some shit with planes. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a some shit with planes thing. You know, specificity yeah. and effort counts a little bit. All right, so here. All right, Bryce. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you can ever, answer whatever answer. You ever, this you is ever, a free country. Uh, fucking for real, dude. You ever been to an airport? <laughs> All right, that's it. Just go, just go. He said some. You ever space, been to an airport? Space. So when you're there, what you do is you go through a door, and uh -huh. now you're on a plane. Oh, yeah. he got to a Those plane. planes fly to other airports. Yes, they fly. There's very more than high. one of them. I rest my case. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Brian has said a redistribution of states. If there were 20 states. Oh, that's the fucking smartest. And Justin says <laughs> it's an airspace thing. <laughs> Let's take a look at the map. I hope it's an airspace. Air traffic control hey! zones. These are oh shit! Oh shit! Ah, fuck airspace <laughs> thing! Yeah, singing the song that you're flying along to airspace control thing. Air zones for you and me. <laughs> Airspace controls us for you and me. Uh, uh. <laughs>
There we go. Uh, Justin was <laughs> correct on that. Eighties procedural <laughs> airspace <laughs> control <laughs> thing. Airspace control things. <laughs> they're kicking at doors, showing badges. <laughs> they're gonna, they're doing weed on planes. <laughs> they do what they want. You man. used to do, be able to do that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it really do be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Simply do be like that. All right. Uh, Brett, what is our score going into our final round? Our score into the final round is Justin has four points. Brian has one point. You know what? As Albert Einstein once says, yeah, you can have you can make all the points you want. I only need to make one, motherfucker. And then he dropped the mic, and the mic went down because gravity is real. <laughs> That and, wasn't him, though. Right? And, then he, was, and then Brian left, which Brian is Brian went to Ikea. Weird. He went to Ikea. Is Philip Morris? No, no Philip Morris. No, no, it's no. from me. We need to bring in his rival, R.J. Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Let's go to our final map, and this is going to be worth five points. Crazy. Holy now that shit. Happens. All right. Our next map. I hope it's a good one, because I don't know what order they're in. Uh... Is that a good one, or do you want to move on? We're gonna we're gonna skip this one. This is a map of uh, all of the U.S. counties with an in and out in it. Uh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> this is perfect. This is a, a map here of the United States. Uh, uh, Justin, because you are in the lead, yeah, you are going to guess what this map is. All right, that's why I went first all the other times is because I was in the lead. <laughs> Like we're trying to figure this out. Okay, all right. <laughs> so this is a map. It looks like an electoral college map. Uh, there are a bunch of red it? states in various different shades of red, but I don't believe this is an electoral college map because if that were the case, then Georgia would have the most electoral college votes at 381. <laughs> seems high. Seems a lot. That yeah, but high. that is the deepest red of the state. So I am going to say that this is a map of most total electoral college votes that have gone to a Republican candidate. Okay. Most electoral votes that have gone total. To, yeah. Total that have gone to so a Republican. I don't know. Fucking 1982 or some shit. All right. Brian, what, uh, what, what do you notice about this map? Uh, I, Apparently, Texas has 99 luft balloons. <laughs> I, I, uh... uh and uh, by the way, uh, I want to give a shout out to Trey Warren, who has put together this funny little poster yeah. of uh, a it couple of boys. Fits, <laughs> <laughs> and, and not doing no harm. Uh, uh, I'm going to make it something Dragon Con related. Uh, no, okay. uh, but 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 even then, like I assume some sci-fi authors live in in Portland. Um, mm. Either one. Yeah. Like, see, it's a, what, what states are? It, it, there's a lot of states that seem to not have a number or a shading on them. Uh, yeah, it, it's it, it, it's nothing west. Uh, uh, like, uh, okay, everything is centered around Georgia. Georgia is deep red and. Uh, but it doesn't seem to align with population. Uh, is this the number of... Oh my God! This is the number of Confederate symbols that still stand. Still oh. stand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them statues that everyone's bring, bringing down and whatnot. What about the ones that like, are laying there? Uh, wait, 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 they've been killed. <laughs> They killed the statues. So, all right. right. I mean, so, what do you, so what do you think? They let them live? No. So they, you're they, saying they, these? Uh, this is this, this is Confederate bullshit. Is what what this is? This uh, this is where there are memorials or monuments to a uh, 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 terrible Confederate. So there's eleven in Pennsylvania. Yeah. There's sixty four in yeah. Ohio. Yeah. There's one in Illinois. That's right. The Il the one Il the Illinois Confederate write that movie before it gets taken optioned licensed to Illinois. No. <laughs> oh yes, li okay. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got it. <laughs> All right, so Brian's gonna say these are the number of still standing Confederate monuments. Yeah. Yep. In yep. These states. All right. And uh, Justin, if you forgot, uh, uh, his answer was the Air most... Air control thing. So, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to play my Justin rules. What I meant to say was 
Confederate bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, Justin said the most electoral votes total given to a Republican candidate. Something like that. Since 1982. Uh, since, yeah, I'll write down 1982. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> weird, weird that uh, not a one. Not, not, not a one from any of those states, huh? From those, the other from, states? From, yeah. Yeah. I guess California, That I guess I immediately invalidated it if it was through the Reagan years. Bush v. Gore? Yeah. yeah. I might have fucked up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> No, you got. I might have fucked up. Good. Let me help you out, Justin. Oh. You did. I fucked up, man. <laughs> All right, Yo, well, dude, I fucked up, man. <laughs> uh, Justin, I'm gonna drop your answer into the answer hole here. Oh, we're gonna drop find it. it. Drop it. Two. Usually comes out as a winner. Three, two, <laughs> drop. <laughs> a long drop. I forgot to drop <laughs> it. Took a while. Fluttered about a bit. Here it comes. Hey! Oh, fuck you. This is a map. Wait, 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 wait. This is a map of Waffle House locations by state. Damn. I think my point stands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, hold on. So I win on that? I feel yeah. like yeah. I, I, <laughs> science is, is not going to call Waffle House get Confederate. More Confederate or more Republican? Yeah, that's that's. I, uh, I, oh, hello. Welcome to the home of low taxes and waffles. Oh. What can I get for you? Or. Derp, 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 we... <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone please clip Brian Brush and say derp, derp. It was me the this whole time. No! The whole time. I have never wanted to go to a Civil War reenactment with you more. <laughs> oh, states' rights. Reconstruction. Could you imagine? This was really about textiles. <laughs> <laughs> George Washington had them too. <laughs> performance art point. So they go through the trouble of having a whole reenactment only when, when it's like, and start the war. And everybody. Start the war. Start the war. <laughs> everybody wearing gray just runs around in circles and they start clipping into each other like a. They're just F troop. <laughs> Not as old a reference as I Love Lucy. Yeah. I'm trying to make you feel more. <laughs> no, 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 I don't feel bad at all. All right. And with the score of. So wait, so hold on. We gave it to me because we didn't want to call Waffle House racist. Correct. If, Bri if Brian had said literally anything other than racism, he probably would have I'm comfortable won. with it. Uh, the, 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 the war of Republican aggression will not be forgotten, <laughs> however. <laughs> Holy shit, there's 99 Waffle House? I guess there's a Waffle House down yeah, on the highway by the airport, here in town. Right? Yeah, we got a couple here. Alrighty, everybody. Well, uh, that uh, with a score of 9 to 1, Justin is your winner. Clearly. Hey! Um, if you have got an idea for a game, something maybe that inspires you, this was inspired just by a tweet that I saw. Um, it was if, a really, really good one. Whoever it was that put this out there, thank you, because uh, this was a, a delight. Yeah, uh, 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 R. A. J. Andelman is her is her, uh, the, her her tweet was a map of the United States with numbers on them, and the numbers were how many corgis are up for adoption in those various states Aww. for an adoption thing. So, uh, but if you've got an idea for a game, a message, a punishment, all that stuff, send a it into our email, Great Night pod at gmail.com and brett and myself and everybody else who looks at that inbox will read it and see all of your beautiful contributions yeah punishment yeah, yeah please yes <laughs> yes yes, yes brett and make your punishments too <laughs> punishment all righty well we have a very special guest in studio we do we do making his debut on great night is uh, a very sparkling young comic who uh you've seen him on deaf comedy jam <laughs> uh ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for andrew eden <laughs> uh, 
The man who famously has never set foot in a Waffle House, nor would he ever. No. What? But I was conceived in one. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been there at least for a minute. Speaking of mental images, I met your parents <laughs> this weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Parents this weekend, yeah. Uh, uh, why are you? Why do you hate your birthday? Uh, I don't hate my birthday. So I, I was I, I released a book recently. It was going to be with my birthday. And it got pushed back a week because of supply chain stuff. The books weren't going to get there. Okay, so these are all words. But you had a birthday that happened last week. Uh huh. And then all of a sudden you had a book launch. Uh huh. And your parents and friends from out of town and a bunch of people gathered, almost as if they would for your birthday. Uh -huh. But it wasn't for your birthday. It was for your book launch. Right. And between them giving me cake or them buying my book, <laughs> <laughs> see this guy I gets was it. Like, I know how social capital works. This guy books. Uh huh. He does. Uh huh. This guy books. Yeah. Uh, what is the name of your book? It is called. Inappropriately Human, 21 Short Stories, a new and delightful short story anthology by me, Andrew Heaton. By the way, if you hear me refer to it as Appropriately Human on the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast that comes out tomorrow, just know I'm a dipshit and an idiot <laughs> no, and I forgot no, it. Know that your affection for Andrew Heaton runs so deep that it's difficult to... It's difficult to remember... Call him anything other than Appropriately, than appropriately Human. human. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is really, really funny. In all seriousness, there, there was an awesome event that yeah, happened on, on Saturday... Had a great crowd, which considering it was outdoors and it was 40 degrees outside is is just an amazing turnout. Uh, you did some some reading from it and it was it killed. I think did really well. I, like, I felt like a real proper author and everything. It was a great feeling. Because <laughs> there were there were people there that weren't there for us. There was like like two tables that for whatever reason, when they put out all the signs saying like an event's gonna be here, they were like, not these two tables. These two <laughs> tables we wanna give to yeah. To like, you know, first come, first serve. Yeah, they actually did remove those, but uh, one of those couples did stick around and bought the books anyway. That's yeah. awesome. So oh I, no, I that, that, that's I that. Yeah. No, that's what I was gonna say. Is like they were they were dying too. Like it was it was awesome. Uh, so twenty one stories. I I don't know which one you're about to do, but I have my fingers crossed about it. Uh, I I hope it's the one I'm thinking of because I've heard it twice and I like it a lot. But but uh, I would say confidently. That uh, that what you're about to read will be representative of the entire book experience. It's totally worth it. If you, uh, 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 I assume it's not the same one that is on your feed, the political orphanage. No, right? it's not. I might put it up there eventually, but not yet. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Well, with a legitimate book reading from yes. the science fiction comedy book, inappropriately human, twenty one short stories, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Mightyheaton.com slash books. Uh, yeah. uh, buy yep. it while you're hearing it because you're laughing so hard you're going to type in that right there and buy it. Mightyheaton.com slash books. Uh, Five-star reviews on Amazon. Andrew Heaton. Lee. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Now's the time to adjust that. Now's the time to adjust this. <laughs> All right. Thank you. This is... Regarding your timeline infractions, dear Mr. Hartley, I've been assigned to your case by the Bureau and will send a copy of this letter to your attorney at which time you provide his or her name. I appreciate your cooperation in advance with the Bureau's efforts. First, while the Bureau applauds your outspoken antipathy to Nazism, we nonetheless cannot allow chrononauts to alter the timeline by attempting to go back and assassinate Adolf Hitler. Whenever that happens, another German leader comes to power in his stead, who is equally anti-Semitic but far more competent. That Germany honors its non-aggression pact with Stalinist Russia until after it mops up with Churchill and conquers the whole of Europe. So you see, the only real benefit to going back in time to kill Hitler is that the chaplet mustache remains a quirky but acceptable form of facial hair well into the 21st century. No doubt you agree it's not worth it. Outcries on social media notwithstanding, the Bureau simply cannot permit any more attempts on the life of Adolf Hitler. Which brings us to your peculiar situation. You will be happy to know that you did not accidentally hand victory to the Nazis by shooting Hitler, but only because, by mistake, you fatally shot Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> My colleagues and I are both at a loss as to how you could possibly make an error of this magnitude. We understand that Chaplin was dressed like Hitler, but he was also on a film set in California. Frankly, we're flummoxed. Did you at no point check to see what continent you were on? Did it not occur to you that he and everyone else on set spoke perfect English? Both myself and the Bureau admire the patriotic zeal which compelled you to try to save President Kennedy. 
Here I must sadly inform you that we cannot permit any such changes to the timeline whatsoever, however lamentable his untimely demise. In the timelines where President Kennedy finishes a second term, the United States and the Soviet Union initiate thermonuclear war due to an errant flock of geese and fatal miscommunications. The Bureau contends that the Cold War period is fraught with such catastrophic near misses, and for that reason must be perfectly maintained, as is, for fear of accidentally blundering the timeline into nuclear annihilation. Fortunately, you did not trigger World War III during your attempt to preemptively neutralize Lee Harvey Oswald at a Halloween party in 1962 but only because you didn't actually shoot Lee Harvey Oswald. You shot an unrelated man at the party dressed as Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Once again, the Bureau is puzzled. At first we thought you merely misidentified Oswald and shot the wrong man. However, an eyewitness account recorded by police states, quote, when the lunatic spotted Gus, he said, God damn it, what is Hitler doing here? I already shot that asshole. Leave JFK the fuck alone, Adolf, and open fire. This is baffling on multiple levels. Why did you think Hitler, who died in 1945, would be attending a Halloween party in Dallas in 1962? <laughs> Even if you thought, somehow, that you encountered Hitler, why did you leave without shooting Lee Harvey Oswald as well, who you knew would assassinate Kennedy? Most bewilderingly, the man you shot wasn't even in a Hitler costume. He was in a Chaplin costume. <laughs> Can you honestly not tell the difference between Adolf Hitler and Charlie Chaplin? Do you think they are somehow the same person? We at the Bureau are genuinely curious. Moving on. You are no doubt aware that federal law prohibits you from gambling in the past using knowledge obtained from the future. Not only is profiting from such information patently illegal, any resulting proceeds are subject to capital gains taxes from the IRS as well as prosecution from state and local gambling commissions. The Bureau is therefore issuing you an official warning for your visit to the Remington Park horse races in Oklahoma City on March 4, 1998. However, we will not be seeking criminal gambling charges against you as we find no evidence that you materially profited from the event. Of course, the absence of such profit is confounding. The Bureau regularly dispatches undercover agents to casinos, the Kentucky Derby, Wall Street, and so forth to monitor potential financial abuse from morally dubious chrononauts. One such agent in attendance at Remington Park on said date spotted you wagering a significant sum of money. Yet when the race began, he observed you jump up and down, scream, punch a hole through your hat, rip your gambling almanac in half, then hurl it in the trash that you kicked over. Our agent collected said almanac on, as evidence and noted that it was dated March 4th, 1996, two years prior to the race. <laughs> Are we to understand that you traveled back in time with the intent of illegally prognosticating horse race outcomes only to get the date wrong? <laughs> Even if you did not notice going to the wrong year, surely the fact that most of the horses listed in your almanac did not correspond to those competing in the actual race indicated something amiss? While we seek no criminal charges on gambling, we do believe that you should be prosecuted for shooting that horse. <laughs> I must assume that in a fit of pique, you discharged your gun in a random direction which happened to strike one of the race animals. However... I cannot help but note that the name of the horse you wounded <laughs> is Charlie Chaplin Pony. <laughs> now, surely, surely you did not think the horse was Hitler. <laughs> did you? I cannot for the life of me figure out how even the most attenuated of logic could possibly compel you to confuse the tyrannical leader of the Third Reich <laughs> with a four-legged racehorse in the year 1996. Particularly given that it was not that it was named Charlie Chaplin, not Speedy Adolf or Mein Fuhrer or something like that, but Charlie Chaplin, actually Charlie Chaplin Pony, meaning that the nomenclature includes all the necessary information to deduce that its bearer was A, a horse, and B, not Hitler. Technically speaking, it is not illegal to deposit objects in the past and collect them in the future if they do not affect any events in the intervening years. For example, there are several highly regarded French vineyards which deposit their wines in designated caverns 200 years in the past, then collect the aged vintages at their point of origin in the timeline. We assume you were attempting to do something similar by burying whiskey. Now, I am something of a Scotch connoisseur, and as such, need gently inform you that whiskey ages in barrels, but not bottles. As a barrel of whiskey matures, it absorbs oak extractives in color, thereby mellowing the bite of the malt. This cannot occur in a glass bottle meaning that the handle of 12-year-old Cutty Sark you buried remains age 12 despite its two centuries underground. <laughs> now, this is an understandable oversight, and I do not wish to tease you about it. However, I am mystified 
that you apparently lost track of where you buried said whiskey. Did you not simply time travel from the past to the present in more or less the same general locale? If for same reason you visited an unrelated location before returning to its vicinity, why didn't you draw a map? We gather that you lost track of the whiskey cache because of the half dozen large holes you dug in random spots near the bottle's vicinity without actually stumbling onto it, the largest of which is, of course, the entirely unearthed grave of Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> We have recollected the deceased actor's remains and reburied them with all due honors. However, we are asking you to pay for a replacement of the coffin lid as someone carved, fuck you, Hitler, give me back my scotch into it. <laughs> I understand that you were a married man and that you take marital fidelity extremely seriously. This is, of course, commendable. I am merely a public servant and make no claims to be a theologian or authority on ethics. However, I do not share your opinion that if one time travels 20 years past the death of one's wife, they are, quote, legally a widower and, quote, totally free to bang floozies without consequence or guilt because their wife is, quote, dead at this point in the timeline. That strikes me as a petty technicality and one which violates the spirit of your vows. Evidently, your wife concurs, evidenced by her loud confrontation of you and a young lady named Misty Ribbons at Smokey Joe's Tavern 40 years from now. The young lady also appears to agree, given that she joins your wife in chasing you around Smoky Joe's with a broken pool cue. Normally, we would have no jurisdiction over a minor tavern brawl four decades hence. Smoky Joe's could press charges if they so choose, but in a standard temporal court. However, in this instance, you fled the confrontation by hopping into your time machine and hurtling backwards through space-time, thus falling under federal purview. Potentially of British jurisdiction, too. While Massachusetts is, of course, an American state, it was an English colony as of 1692. Therefore, when you shouted, She's a witch! Get the witch! at your pursuing wife upon the moment she stepped out of her own time machine in Salem, you did so on English soil. You may be contacted by the UK Temporal Affairs Office. Now, don't get me wrong. I am glad you and Mrs. Hartley have patched things up. No one in the Bureau is rooting for the dissolution of a marriage, least of all me. In my official capacity representing the Bureau, however, I am rankled by your choice of location for a celebratory makeup date, namely Ford's Theater on April 15, 1865. <laughs> you are correct in noting that the Bureau issues time travel permits to witness historical events on a case by case basis. These permits are given entirely at the discretion of the Bureau, almost always to academics, and only when, the de when we determine the observer will cause no alteration to established proceedings. Now I ask you, do you really think an intoxicated couple shouting play Freebird at stage actors in between nips from a bottle of Cuddy Sarks constitutes anonymous observation with minimal attention or interaction? Further, why that night, specifically? I mean, obviously you didn't go to Ford's Theater just to yuck it up watching Our American Cousin. If you did, you would have attended any other preceding night. So you must have inexplicably planned a date around the romantic spectacle of watching the great emancipator get murdered. <laughs> Sir, you have a time machine. You could have gone back and watched the Beatles' rooftop concert live. You could have witnessed the premiere of Handel's Messiah Suite or attended Woodstock, but no. You reprobates decided the most romantic thing in the world would be to spend your anniversary swigging blended scotch from a stolen bottle while watching the president get his brains blown out. It's morbid. Horribly so. You sicken me. Which brings us to the events of April 15, 1865, of which you are now inextricable. I have written above at length about interfering with the timeline, why despite our fervent wishes we must refrain from killing murderous tyrants or sparing the lives of innocent martyrs, because so often the unintended consequences of these interventions cascade into something far worse. The official Bureau investigation finds that President Lincoln grew so irritated by your boorish behavior that he pre prematurely excused himself from his seat presumably to alert an usher or to personally confront you. Thus, when counterposed to actual historical events, John Wilkes Booth ran onto the balcony brandishing a Derringer pistol and shouting, Six Simper Tyrannus, he found the president, was absent. At this point, eyewitnesses confirmed that an oddly dressed drunkard on the front row shouted, Oh, fuck, it's Edgar Allan Poe, <laughs> and fired his weapon at him. As Booth tumbled forth and lay moaning on the stage, the drunkard laughed at him and said, that's what you get for speaking Latin, dickhead, and shot him again in the leg. <laughs> At this point, the ensuing events become confused since the timeline is so hopelessly muddled that straightforward linear causality is rendered moot. All we know 
is that a man raced onto the balcony waving a pistol and shouted, You fool! You've undone everything! I must kill the president and restore the timeline. That man was Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> According to corroborating eyewitnesses as well as your own testimony, you then tried to shoot Chaplin in the crotch, but your gun was out of bullets. So you yelled, How many times do I have to kill this Nazi horse? and hurled your bottle of scotch in a line drive at Chaplin's head, which improbably made direct and painful contact, knocking him off the balcony and to his subsequent and painful death below. We have no idea how Charlie Chaplin got there, or why he was there. The anachronism remains an utter mystery, least of which is that the causality surrounding him doesn't add up. How could you kill him in 1865 if you also killed him in 1940? Does he at some point obtain a time machine from the future, or secretly build one himself? Does our timeline intersect with one in which Charlie Chaplin is a time traveler instead of an actor? We do know, however, that when the smoke cleared, President Lincoln solemnly removed his hat and announced, I don't know who you are or where you're from or what any of this pandemonium pertains to, but as President of the United States, I hereby grant you a general and unlimited pardon from all federal prosecutions now and forever. Then shouted, Huzzah! God bless America! Frankfurt is the capital of Kentucky, and tossed his hat in the air. <laughs> Due to this lawfully recorded pardon from our greatest five-term president, <laughs> the Bureau finds itself in the frustrating position of being unable to prosecute you for any of your myriad, reckless violations of established federal law. Please note, a federal pardon does not shield you from local or state criminal prosecutions, most notably discharging a firearm at a horse and desecrating the grave of Charlie Chaplin in 1962, and then again in 2004, and in 2007. <laughs> However, we are pained to admit that at the present date, the statutes of limitations on all of these crimes have expired. Therefore, on behalf of the Bureau of Chronological Integrity and the government of the United States, I am hereby authorized to issue you a sternly worded warning. <laughs> you are forewarned, Mr. Hartley. Your actions have been atrocious and your judgment lacking. You are hereby placed on official probation, subject to ongoing bureau opprobrium. Should you further exhaust this agency's patience, you will seriously court the risk of invoking immediate official censure. I trust these unfortunate matters have run their course, and your activities will henceforth fall well below the threshold of public scrutiny. Cordially, Elliot Clarice, Chronological Aberrations Prosecutor, United BOC. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my good God. Ladies and gentlemen, MightyHeaton.com slash books. Go buy that shit. I mean, based on the chat room alone. Uh, yeah, it was uh, a good. I couldn't see any of the comments. Oh, my oh, God. No. They, no. They, they, were, they were all in. It was but, great. Excellent. It was great. It was uh, electric. No, just just absolutely oh. insane. That's one of the funniest things I have heard in, in forever. Thank it was uh, 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 fucking excellent. Go get it now. Let's actually wrap up the show. We'll get into the after show. We'll talk with Eaton a little bit more. Hells yeah, dude. Uh, uh, Brett, what do we learn? Well, we've learned that uh, William Morris is quite a scamp and looks great with Phillip, a hat on Phillip, Phillip, Phillip Morris. Philip Morris. Philip Morris. Oh, what did I say? Didn't you get William <laughs> Frawley? Yeah. Well, you got symmetry. William on symmetry. the brain. Well, As it was in the beginning, so hey, it is at the end. In the universe, I can say whatever the hell I want. Uh, we, we've learned that that really that really Heaton should be called the official show dandy. I think. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, all right. And uh, and also, really, I need to get more punishments to get. Oh, that reminds me. There's a punishment that we didn't do. Uh, what was it again? You're going to sing the recap of the show. All right, let, 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 let's have that be the first thing that happens in the after show. Right. So make, show. Make, yeah, make, and, make sure you download the after that, show. Uh, that I love you all, and I like my shirt. Oh, hells yeah. Still a great night, people. Uh, shine on, you crazy shine diamonds. Shine on, you crazy diamonds. Woo! Yeah. Five stars. Get I'm going to open up my, my Amazons. Five damn stars. Five damn oh, stars. I'm glad that you sing it in the harmony you that me alive. You heard me survive. No, there's never been a greater night, a single battle later night, a past the mass.
masturbation night uh, Let's get drunk and laugh tonight There's never been a greater, great night Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program <laughs>